Hey everyone, it's Zarev here, and today I'm giving you all the Yume Nikki Full Iceberg Director's Cut Deluxe Special Edition Number 9 Menu Meal Special Deluxe Combo Bonus. Yeah, I made two of these iceberg videos and I decided to combine them both into one, as well as give some extra commentary and dialogue every now and then. Uh, I believe I did a pretty good job with these icebergs, so luckily I didn't have to add too much, and also not a lot of re new information has resurfaced. So here we are, the full Yume Nikki Iceberg. I'd like to say before this video starts that if you enjoy this content and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon down below, but I won't get more into it. I'll just let you guys watch the video and enjoy. From Mario 64 to even Roblox, the Iceberg genre videos become extremely popular on YouTube. If you don't know, the Iceberg format refers to a deep dive from known facts and theories, which is a surface level of the water, to the more unknown features and theories in a given game, or maybe even a TV series. I wonder if anyone's done that yet. Either way, today I decided to tackle the Yume Nikki Iceberg, which I found on Reddit. I decided to add my own things to it, and basically try to bring some new people into the fandom, and maybe give some of the older fans something to look forward to, and maybe even new information. So sit back, buckle up, and let's dive into the deepest waters of the Yume Nikki Iceberg. The balcony ending is essentially the main ending to the game where Matasuki jumps off the balcony to commit suicide presumably. Boboa is a character spawned via an easter egg where you have a 1 in 64 chance of triggering it. Going into Ponyko's room and turning on and off the light over and over again can trigger this event. Once triggered, Boboa will spawn in the room, making it unable to leave or wake up. Interacting with Boboa will teleport you to a dimension filled with very creepy imagery. Boboa is commonly said to have inspired Gaster from Undertale. A neat is a recluse in Japanese culture who doesn't partake in social interaction and rarely leaves the home. This is backed by the fact that Matasuki refuses to leave her room. QQ Kun is a phallic character found along a staircase in the game. In order to access it, you must enter a zipper lake room, bringing multiple theories into play. It also rubs the stairway rails as you approach in a very suggestive manner. Face is a popular jump scare, and I believe one of the few jump scares in the game, which involves a mask like face flashing on screen with creepy music playing. Neck Crick is a random occurring easter egg or maybe even event where Matasuki will wake up with her neck twisted to the left or right. This Neck Crick event also has 8-bit sprites which is kind of weird because it looks like it was intended to be some type of effect at some point that you could use, who knows how. Remove connections probably refers to remove doors to other rooms or events to other rooms or unused rooms like FC World C and the debug room. Extremely rare easter eggs and occurrences range from Takufusen, who has a 1 in 3600 chance of spawning in the white desert, or more common ones like the Famicom glitch, which is an homage to Earthbound. Direct draw errors are simply errors when going into full screen that occur even in fan games for some reason. Ponoko's theme is Lavender Town is one that most people couldn't really discuss on their own, but as a musician, I can finally use that knowledge. Ponoko's theme has a very similar key progression to that of Lavender Town if you listen to the main keys. Mesoamerican symbolism is used throughout the game in a very profound way, and it's very obvious. This includes skyboxes, NPCs, and even the main hub. The most prominent art form used is ancient Peruvian art. Two identical frogs will give you an effect in First World and the Dense Woods B. Eyes are present nearly everywhere in Yume Nikki to the point where people have started theories about them. These theories involve Matasuki being afraid of people judging her, fear of being watched, or trauma due to sexual assault. Characters with strange eyes, disembodied eyeballs, and eyes on stalks can be frequently found in the game. It's essentially where the developer of the game locked most of the content behind a wall where you had to answer a password using something involving Japanese folklore, so most westerners couldn't really guess this. 
Unused codes in version 0.09 was meant to make Nasu, the Famicom's minigame playable character, show up in This Woods A and Windmill World to link with Famicom World C. This was removed for unknown reasons. I'm unsure what this one means, but you may have to install the Japanese language pack on your computer before installing the Japanese version of RPG Maker RTP in order to play Yume Nikki properly. The Yume Nikki manga is essentially an adaptation of the game in a web magazine manga Life Win Plus. A dead body can be found in dense woods lying on the road. Some other imagery may be present. This could mean some of the previous imagery relates to Matsuki being involved in a car accident. It's unknown if she caused it or was a victim of it. Yume Nikki Dream Diary, the current adaptation of the original which can be found on Steam, used some scrap content from Yume Nikki's original. There are three vending machines scattered throughout the game selling items for yen. Yen can be acquired by stabbing certain enemies. The vending machines sell health drinks that increase Matsuki's health by one. The machines each sell different versions of the drink. There is no known use of upgrading your health besides having a different number on your save file. There are some early demos of the game which are incredibly difficult to find. There have been treasure hunts searching for them and so far only three versions, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.9 have been found out of the 10 demos. Despite these versions still not being found, there's still a lot of information I can give you about them. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Like this could take up a video in of itself. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link down below and I'll paraphrase real quick. Between versions 0 0.00 to 0 0.04, a lot of things were changed from sound effects to map designs, color adjustments, and I believe there were some effects either added or removed as well. Like I said, the link below will be attached, and maybe I'll just do a separate video covering all of the lost information. Throughout the game, strange creatures can be found which are awfully close to the shapes of male and female reproductive organs. Along with the frequent inclusion of hands animated to grab at the air and eyeballs staring towards the screen, Players believe this symbolism to be explicit in nature. This could probably refer to the theory that the whole game is a dream, even the awake sequences. The jellyfish during the ending could be a hint towards that. App Local is an application used to run Japanese RPG ending games on non-Japanese systems without the problems that can happen when no running it normally. This essentially goes back to installing the Japanese language pack. This knife effect theory is completely wrong. You can pretty much find the audio online. This may refer to the Nexus being accessible in real life, similar to the backrooms theory. Maybe in certain dream states, humans can access a Nexus similar or personalized for themselves. One of the found demo builds is 0.04 build. Free Game Station included other builds of the game in their magazine, which are now lost to time or auction off for extremely high prices. Further research shows nothing unusual about the game itself, although something sinister may lie below. Version 0 0.06 was also found, which is from Free Game Station, so I guess we weren't supposed to research that either. Oops. On Oboa Chan, someone discovered an ancient Parkin poncho that had a drawing of a girl that looked very similar to Matsuki. Image attached. A theory that all fangs are connected, maybe through the Nexus in some way. Sun is a game designer known for his creations in the Toho project. I guess people think he is a mysterious Kikiyama group. All copies of Yume Nikki are personalized. I believe this small little theory comes up due to the fact that there were so many different versions of the game with either cut content, added content, or easter eggs that are either never going to be found by anyone else or were found by small groups of people who notice these differences in either gameplays or playthroughs of themselves. I personally am one of the victims of this because I recall playing version 0.06 and it being different than version 0.09. This doesn't necessarily mean that it is personalized, but it could feel that way if people were playing different versions of the game. A lot of content from 0.04's version of the game was completely cut out of more recent versions, meaning those people who played that would have a more personalized quote-unquote experience than those who played the more recent versions of the game.
this can make for a very creepy experience, especially if you don't know that something like this is what's happening. If you didn't know that this is just an updated version of the game or an outdated version of the game, you'd be playing a game that seemed completely different from others. Either way, Yume Nikki does provide different experiences for different people due to the amount of easter eggs and random occurrences, so maybe every copy is personalized to some extent. The title of the game, Yume Nikki, roughly translates from Japanese to English as Dream Diary. In the number world, you could find a Tori Nengen sleeping in a bed. Using the knife effect and stabbing the Tori Nengen will trigger its manic or lunatic mode. Once she catches the player, they will randomly be sent to one of the two random locations, one filled with an aforementioned hiragana character and the other filled with eyeballs. Hyperspeed probably refers to a bike glitch that can be found involving the bike and save game chair in Matasuki's room. Performing this glitch gives the character super speeds unable to be achieved in any other way. Using an effect during this will reset it. Steve Leaf Kara. Okay, I won't even try that. Leaf is a fan name for the character that can be found in the canal of Number World using the cat effect. The cat effect is an effect that lures NPCs towards the player when used, so using it in an area will slowly but surely bring Leaf into view. Leaf can't be interacted with, but no clipping to it allows it to be killed with the knife effect. Using the stoplight effect also changes Leaf's sprite. The blindfold effect is an unused effect that puts a blindfold over Matasuki's sprite. It is theorized that it can affect Matasuki in terms of what she can and can't see. Some other unused effects are Grayscale, which is speculated to be planned to be used in the right desert, and Will o' the Wisp, which is a color changing spirit sprite. Uboa is Matasuki's mother. This theory pretty much has no basis, but uh, a 4chan post in 2005 by an anonymous user said. Uboa is Matatsuki's mother's mangled face screaming in pain. There really isn't any evidence to this or anything, but it's a very dark thing to speculate. Okay, I was completely wrong about this, and although I included like the information on screen, I know some people listen to these icebergs instead of watch them, so I'll continue to describe what's on screen now. Uh, chapter 5, page 5 of the Yuma Nikki manga. Matatsuki refers to Uboa as mom at the bottom of the page. Uboa seems to have a ponytail like Ponyko. Uboa took Matasuki's umbrella and started hitting her with it. The fact that Matasuki used mom could resemble that Matasuki's mother abused her. And also due to Uboa taking the effects from Matasuki could mean that Matasuki's mom also took her belongings. And then that's what's pretty much stated here. Okay, so you can take that for what you will. Me is one of the few English fan games that draws inspiration from Dot Flow, Yume Tuki, and many other early fan games. Just like Matasuki, Mi is a girl who refuses to leave her room, but instead of sleeping, she uses her stereo to enter the dream world. I Am Not In Your Dream is the title of a novel by Akira, which was first published in 2013. The full book, which includes Panako and Masada as characters, as well as events and effects from the game, can be purchased on Amazon and many other ebook sellers. Law Russ is the game developer of Dot Flow and other RPG Mecha games. I don't really know why this is on the list, but maybe it'll be relevant in the future. The Tori Ningen bed is what we mentioned earlier. It's the same one that can trap Matatsuki in a room in the number world, and it can also give access to Mini Hell. The name of the creator of the game, Kikiyama, can be translated as Machine Mountain, with Kiki meaning machine or equipment, and Yama meaning mountain or hill. This could possibly mean that the Mars sign character, one of the fan favorites of, you know, the fan base, could be Kikiyama themselves, or at least their personification in the game. The jellyfish in Yume Nikki are very similar to the lotus flower. In Buddhist and Japanese culture, the lotus flower represents purity, divinity, and spiritual awakening. 
This may be a metaphor for Metasuki's suicide being a transcendence from her disturbed life into a state of nirvana or peace, or her awakening from the dream into the true real world. Couldn't find anything about this, but maybe the sliding door could be cracked with an effect or through a random occurring event by leaving and returning to the balcony. Kaokai, hope I'm pronouncing that properly, is an event from the earlier versions of the Fangei Yume Tuki, which is supposed to be kind of a sequel to Yume Nikki. This event was only present in the earliest versions of the game, around version 0.035. In the library, there was a door on the wall that would take you to a small room, then a hallway featuring what appears to be monochromatic dolls while ominous music plays. Going through the door on the other end leads to a soul bloody bookcase with very strange music that can be heard in the game. Inter interacting with it causes the screen to go black, and then a red face appears after a few strange seconds, accompanied by a strange hoarse sound causing the player to wake up. In certain rooms, like the sewer processing plant B, sewer tunnel B, and sewer tunnel C, there are black-like window holes in the wall. You can peer into these by pressing interact, which will show you a strange, disturbing drawing. Each of the nine holes shows a different drawing, but there's no evidence that these are scrapped NPCs. I only kept this because, you know, Christmas spirit, but... This slightly refers to an effect in Dot Flow, which would have been a Santa hat added to the character. The utility of it is still unknown. In the out of bound area of the Neon Highway in Yume Tuki, two crab like chasers can send you directly to the main menu if you make contact with the player. This has to be one of the creepiest things on this list, to be honest. Could you imagine you're just trying to explore this world, you, you know, clip out to look around and whatnot, see if there's any secrets, and suddenly you're getting chased by a sprite you've never seen and it crashes your game. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how people found out about this and how creeped out it must have made them. Another party member can be added to your party, but this never happens in-game. It's nameless and there are no sprites associated with it, but having it in your party causes several scripts in the game to change. For example, all sane and insane Tori Ningen disappear. The Tori Ningen party and nice lunatic in the mall are not removed. The top left cupboard in the guillotine room will disappear. If you stand on its formal tile and press the action button, you'll end up in front of one of the eight cupboards in the number world. If you enter the world again, the cupboard will have returned to its rightful spot. If you wake up, you will be unable to move. You can still open your menu. In Neon World, an unused background scrolls by. There is no proof to this, although it's speculated that Kikiyama is or identifies as a female due to personal pronouns used in old emails. Regardless, this is still an argument for some reason to this very day. It doesn't, guys, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Kikiyama, from what we know, is not even just a singular person. They typically refer to themselves as we. So, Kikiyama seems like a group of people or maybe a duo. SIAS is a derogatory troll term. I'll put what it means on screen because I'm not saying that on YouTube. But it was a troll term used on 4chan in regards to the main character Sabitsuki from Dotflow. All I could find on this one is an album by Silent Cicada that reimagined the original OST to Yume Nikki via remixing and covers. This album is called Yume Nikki Reimagined. It can be found online on YouTube and Bandcamp. Reddit poster, wow, uh, Reddit poster Suck Dawn edited a dot flow sewer sprite, adding the word come to the texture. As such, whenever entering the area in the game where the texture was used, it would crash due to an invalid sprite. This was fixed by replacing the textures with the original. Now this is where it gets really interesting. I'm sorry, I had to wait 10 minutes. Koronba, I believe I'm pronouncing that properly. Developer of fan game LCD DEM posted an odd message in April 2013 asking all those following the game forget about it and remove all content related to it before disappearing and deleting the site hosting the game. The game itself had four versions and two translated into English. I actually played this game a long time back when I had my Yume Nikki fan game craze 
it, the reason why I really played this one and remember it is because it's one of the few that were in English and I didn't have to worry about translations or any errors that I would get from trying to play a Japanese fan game on a English based PC. We can only wonder what made the developer take such a drastic turn. What were they hiding in the game that they didn't want anyone to remember or want anyone to see? Switches in RPG Maker games refer to code that switches on and off events depending on certain parameters. Switch 203 is something that can be activated in the second neon tile path to play the broom chip substitute small one event, which checks to see if the witch effect has been obtained. It changes the tile set and gets garbled up visually. It can be used in Numbers World to perform the same broom chip substitute, except it involves the lamp, which changes the tile set to the forest world. Finally, it can be used in the pink sea to turn the whole map black. How far have we fallen? Dick Me Dicky is a human Nicky fan game by Al. It stars a certain man who has green hair and closed eyes. He appears to be a swap, palette swap of misery. I'm not even going to try that. Misery Ray's protagonist. The game was intended to be a joke with some blatant criticism of developer's shortcomings. The Oxidized Blood Theory is a theory of the fan game Dot Flow. It's based on the idea that Sabatsuki is infected from a disease. Sabatsuki means rusted, Sabi meaning rust. So it's probably an infection that is slowly killing her. A manufacturer group that collaborated with Kikiyama to produce merch in February 2011 to September 27, 2014. They created official rubber keychains, seals, sleeves, t-shirts, badges, pens, rubber coasters, pens again for some reason. Why, why is that on the script twice? CDs, magnets, cards, pencil cases, novels, everything pretty much. This stuff is still extremely rare to find, but you can see images on, on the wiki. A post on Yuboa Chan forum by a user claiming to be Kikiyama, it was later debunked to be an imposter, which is to be expected. Not many people could get in contact with Kikiyama. The poster claimed a 0.10 was finished and that they were planning to continue in terms of the game. This was in 2018. Spetter 2 is a small time musician whose alias has been connected to Koronba, the aforementioned developer of LCDDEM. This is due to the music style is similar to that of the music in LCD. His last post on SoundCloud was roughly around the same time as Karomba's disappearance. Through my own research, I found that even their music website is very similar to LCD Dem's website. So, there you go. Debunked, or rather confirmed, that it is Karomba who runs that Spetter 2 account. Regardless, I don't want anyone contacting them and trying to ask them about their game. They want it taken down, and I think it should stay that way. This 2chan post I researched for a long time. I believe this 2chan post had either the 0.00 build of Yume Nikki or one of Kikiyama's first posts regarding the game. If anyone has an archive of this, please comment it below. I believe this refers to a blog post to the website for the Royal College of Psychiatrists. This blog post explores the effects of social isolation on the person via IRL interactions and dreams. It also explores the effects, dream worlds, and the ending to the game. It's a very interesting read I never thought I'd see on such a website. It could also refer to a made up obscure creepypasta that says that Yume Nikki will basically get into your dreams if you play the game and you'll die if you die in the dreams. Yeah, you can pick which one of those you want to believe. Couldn't find anything on this. I assume it's speculation on how the effects, which are shaped like eggs when placed down, taste like when cooked. Yeah, we need new content in this fan base. People are. We're getting bored. A malware made based on Boa Chan for fun, allegedly. Couldn't find a source of download for this, so take it lightly. I would love to cover level 7, but it's either way too far out of the range of Yume Nikki. Like I said, I would cover some fan game content, but I feel like this iceberg has been a lot of fan game content. So I'm going to skip level 7 and we're going to go right to level 8. The hypertropia theory is a popular theory that Matatsuki has hypertropia, a condition that misaligns the eyes. 
This is why she keeps them closed constantly, and this is probably why she refuses to leave her room and has these nightmarish dreams about being an outcast. The theory states the following, copy and paste it. Maybe Matasuki committed suicide because she was bullied by other girls at school represented by the Tori Ningen, Monaco, Monoe, who were her friends. Ponoko was as well, but Ponoko might have talked about Mata behind her back and shared secrets she shouldn't have. A boy is a representation of anger and betrayal Mato feels towards Ponoko. Other than that, I couldn't really find much else about this, so I'm assuming that the person saying that either Matatsuki killed herself because of Ponoko, or maybe she killed Ponoko because she shared these secrets behind her back. As I said, there is literally no basis behind these theories. There's no there's no dialogue in the game, nor has any of the novels confirmed such a thing. But I guess it's always nice to theorycraft. This insanely stupid theory, sorry, states Matasuki is a skydiver who landed on the balcony of an apartment. This is why she can't open the door since it's locked. Wait, if you're inside the apartment, how is it locked? Anyways, the events of Yume and Nikki actually happened over the course of a few hours according to this theory. Eventually, she jumps off the balcony with her parachute to get down, but messes up the deployment, resulting in her death. Pure crack theory. Yume and Nikki save files are saved in a .lsd file format. It's a default format for save files in games made in RPG Maker, but some people think it's a reference to LSD Dream Emulator. You guys love that game on this channel. A debunked rumor that states that there were hidden messages if you put background music from Yume Nikki into Spectrogram software. I wish this were true, it'd have been so interesting. <sighs> Wait a minute. Allegedly, a fan game actually hid things in their audio spectrographic information, although no other information can be found about it. I couldn't find the name of the game, I couldn't find the audio, or anything about this, so. It's seeming very, very rumor-based creepypasta-ish. The file was named shock.ogg, and the game it was attributed to can't be found via normal search. Deep in the Yume Nikki's fan game wiki, and the only game with ties to Yume Nikki is a web game called Terminal 00, which fits the ARG category. I hope you all enjoyed this iceberg video. I know one of the complaints I got was that I was kind of bored during the video, which isn't the case. I just decided to take a more serious tone with this video. Um, I guess if in the future, if I decide to do another iceberg, spoiler alert, I am. I'll, I'll try my best to add my own personality and energy into it because I know a lot of people who saw the iceberg haven't seen my other videos where I'm spontaneous as fuck and always doing something crazy. But yeah, I'll try to add that energy. And also I'll try to cover an iceberg with more in-depth information on the game itself and not just you know, fan games. But as I said at the start, if you like the video, make sure you like it comment down below what you enjoyed if you have any information that i wasn't able to find please also add that and do not forget to subscribe and check out the patreon if you want to help out the channel it's your boy zarif signing off peace thanks for watching